Welcome everyone and thank you all for coming. My name is Captain Michael Miller and I'm the Public Information Officer for the Akron Police Department. We're here to provide you some updates in relation to a shooting which occurred just after midnight last night on Sunday, June 2nd in the area of Kelly Avenue and 8th Avenue. You will be hearing from Akron Police Chief Brian Harding, Acting Fire Chief Stephen Kaut, Akron Mayor Shamas Malik. We will have time for a short Q&A at the end of the press conference. I ask that you please hold your questions until the very end. Thank you, and at this time, I'd like to invite Police Chief Brian Harding to the stage. Thank you, and good evening. Uh, last night at approximately 10 p.m., our patrol officers respond to a private residence on Kelly Avenue after reports of a large gathering, which included fireworks and loud noise. Officers arrived on scene to a large birthday party with over approximately 200 individuals taking over the street. Officers dispatched the crowd and no arrests were made at that time. Between 10 and midnight, people began coming back to the scene and the party resumed. Just after midnight, re patrol responded again to the same location on Kelly Avenue after the dispatch center received shots fired calls as well as multiple gunshot victims arriving at area hospital emergency rooms. Between EMS and self-transports, it was later found that there had been 25 people total who were injured. We initially believed there were 27. Um, that was because there were some duplicates with people going from one hospital and then ultimately going to another. Of the 25 victims, one 27-year-old male has been confirmed deceased. The latest update we have is that at the 20, of the 25 victims, at least, at least two remain in critical condition this evening, in addition to several who have been admitted with injuries and one the one individual who sadly passed away. Some victims were treated and released from the hospital, and the victims range in age from 19 to 43, with most of the victims in their 30s. My heart goes out to each of the victims, and my prayers are with the loved ones of the deceased. The scene was littered with spent shell casings, mostly pistol, cal pistol caliber rounds stretching from Kelly Avenue and 8th Avenue all the way to Kelly and 7th. We recovered two handguns at the scene. Based on the layout of the spent shell casing, it appears consistent with someone driving by shooting out of a car. We believe that some individuals at the party may have returned fire based on physical evidence at the scene. We do not know if the shooter or the vehicle may have been hit. We have no description of the vehicle to provide at this time. We did recover a DVR system found in the area that was collected and processed. Unfortunately, there was no hard drive, so we were not able to get any footage from that. We continue to search for any additional video or evidence in the area. No arrests have been made yet, and we have no suspect information to provide. We are imploring the community to come forward with anything that you might know regarding this terrible incident. This information can be provided to us in several ways. First, anyone with any information is encouraged to call the Akron Police Department Detective, Detective Bureau at 330-375-2490 or 330-375-2TIP, T-I-P. Citizens may also provide anonymous information in any of the following ways. Summit County Crime Stoppers by calling 330-434-COPS, text T-I-P-S-C-O, with any tips to 274637 or download the Akron Police Department app and you can submit tips on our tip 411. These are also completely anonymous. I want to be clear, we believe there are people in the community this evening who saw something or know something and we are asking them to come forward. We believe there were dozens of people at the party at the time of the shooting and potentially over 100 people who have, may have witnessed the incident. Every single person who may have seen something has an obligation to speak up in order to bring those responsible to justice. Even a small detail can help us crack this case and locate the suspect or suspects involved. We have concerns about the possibility of retali retaliation and are taking steps to prevent that and we need the community's help. 
I also want to thank the officers and the detectives for their immediate and tireless work on this case. I'd also like to recognize the members of the Akron Fire Department who assisted our officers on the scene with transporting victims and helping to treat the wounded. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Acting Chief Stephen Cowell. Thank you, Chief Harding. Good evening. Early this morning, fire department crews responded to assist on the scene of a mass shooting. It's the type of call that you hope never to receive. I want to commend the paramedics, officers, EMTs on scene whose professionalism and skill assisted in the swift response and treatment. In total, we had more than 30 individuals from Akron Fire who responded, including eight medical units, two fire engines, a ladder truck, two battalion captains, our department safety officer, and myself. I also want to commend the professionalism and expertise of our safety communications personnel throughout this incident. Their work ensured a quick response. The scene covered a large area and it was chaotic upon our team's arrival. They quickly and efficiently triaged patients, prioritizing the treatment and transport of those in need of critical care. We train and practice often for events such as this, hoping to never have to do it in real life. But that practice was put into effect last night and led to the safe and fast transport of those needing care. I want to thank our area hospitals also for their quick work. SUMA, Cleveland Clinic, Akron General, Akron Children's Hospital, Western Reserve, and Barberton coordinated with our teams to respond and get everyone treated as quickly as possible. The collaboration I witnessed at the incident last night between the public safety forces and our hospital systems was admirable. I'd also like to acknowledge the Summit County Sheriff's Office for sending several deputies to our area hospitals, as well as the University of Akron Police Department for the same. And of course, each hospital system has their own police force who also responded to ensure the hospitals <coughs> involved were safe to receive these critical care patients. Our crews did an outstanding job last night in their response. Their response was to take care of the public, and now it's our turn to take care of our own crews. These traumatic incidents can weigh heavily on those who respond. Today, we have been organizing our peer support team to speak with any of our paramedics, officers, or anyone involved in the incident about the incident. This peer support team is made up of trained officers and EMTs within our department who will assist our members who have experienced trauma. This support team has proven incredibly effective at helping safety force members work through traumatic incidents such as this. This peer support team will provide a bridge to get our personnel, our officers and firefighters connected to more professional support if necessary. My prayers go out to all the victims and their families, as well as to our own public safety personnel who responded to this scene. At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Malik to the podium. Good evening. I want to start by sharing my condolences with the victims, family, and friends. Uh, my heart goes out to the young man whose life was senselessly cut short and to everyone who was injured. This was a tragic incident which impacts our entire community. All incidents of gun violence are tragedies, uh, but here the sheer number of victims is shocking and deeply concerning. We can only be thankful that of the 25 individuals who were injured, we did not have more fatalities. I'd like to echo the thanks of Chief Harding and Acting Chief Cout to all our public safety forces who responded last night, including Akron Fire, Akron Police, as well as our local, state, and federal partners who have offered their support and assistance, including the Summit County Sheriff's Office. Thank you very much, Sheriff. We know that this country has a gun violence epidemic and that this is the latest in a long line of incidents we have seen across the nation. Safety is our administration's highest priority. The City of Akron and our Akron Police Department remain committed to fighting all violence, especially gun violence. 
I want to be very clear. Anyone who was involved in last night's shooting will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. If there is any retaliatory violence committed as a result of this shooting, anyone engaging in that will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law as well. Tonight we are calling on our community to get involved. There are people out there who know the person or persons involved, and I implore you to speak up. As Chief Harding mentioned, to everyone who was present at the party at the time of the shooting, we need you to speak with police. You have an obligation to speak with police and help us solve this case. As he said, even the smallest detail can help us find the answer to this case. We have to find a solution to further violence. Tonight we are announcing that the Summit County Crime Stoppers have offered a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to the identification, arrest, and successful prosecution of a suspect in this case. Additionally, the U.S. Marshal's Office has offered up to $7,500 towards the same information. That leads to a total reward of $12,500 that's being offered. I want to thank Summit County Crime Stoppers and the U.S. Marshal's Office for their generous support. I'll repeat the tip line for anyone listening at home. Uh, you can call the Akron Police Department Detective Bureau at 330-375-2490 or 330-375-2TIP. Citizens may also provide anonymous information in the following ways. You can reach out to Summit County Crime Stoppers at 330-434-COPS or text TIPSCO with your tips to 274637. Or you can download the Akron Police Department app. You can submit information by texting TIP411, which is a two-way communication process, or by accessing the link on our website, akroncops.org. We want to emphasize that all of those options I just mentioned are fully anonymous. We will share further updates in this case as they become available, and we hope to have a suspect and or arrest information to share with you all very soon. Before we get to question and answer, I'd like to also thank the elected officials who are here with th us this evening to lend their support. We have Akron City Council Vice President Jeff Fusco, Akron City Council President Pro Tem Brad McKittrick, at-Large Councilwoman Linda Mobian, At-Large Councilman Eric Garrett, and Ward 5 Councilman Johnny Hanna. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'd also like to thank you, Sheriff Candy Fothery, for being here and for your office's support. Um, and I want to thank all of the elected officials and other leaders who have reached out uh, to me today to offer their support. Um, and I appreciate everyone and I, on behalf of our community, I appreciate the messages of support and encouragement. And now I'll turn it back over to Captain Miller to lead our question and answer. Thank you, Mayor. As a reminder to media, uh, there are going to be some questions that we cannot answer. Again, the investigation is in its early stages. It's ongoing. There are certain aspects of the investigation that are sensitive, and we won't answer that to maintain the integrity of the investigation. The other thing I'd like to remind you is please ask your questions one at a time. I am planning to move from my left to right with one question per media outlet. One question. I'll have to unfortunately cut that questioning off if it, if it goes uh, further. Um, but in order for us to keep track and, and keep things orderly, that's the best way to uh, go about doing that. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is uh, we are live streaming this, so if you would, Please speak probably intentionally louder than you normally would when you ask her a question so that it can be picked up in the microphone that we're utilizing to live stream. Uh, so with that, I'll open it up to questions and I'll start on my left hand side uh, with questions. Uh, um, Tara. And, and also Tara. state who your question's oh. for. 
Tara Morgan with News 5. Any indication from anyone at the party that they were being targeted in any way or multiple people at the party? And how many shooters do you believe are out there? Yes. I'll answer that one. Um, no information in that directly on that. Um, what was the second part of your question? I apologize. Uh, how many shooters do you believe? That's still don't have that information. That's why we're asking the community support to come forward to help provide those details for us. Is there another question on this side? Uh, sir, go ahead. Yeah, uh, given you know big big event, a lot of people. You know, what can the average citizen? They find themselves in a similar situation. What can the average citizen do to kind of protect themselves, keep them you know possibly reduce their chances of being hit? So I would start by saying if you see the situation get out of control, I would tell you at that point you best to leave the party or the event that you're at. But additionally, I think it's to seek cover and then call for help and make sure that you become a good witness at that point moving forward. Uh, Bryce, go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, um, you mentioned that you're trying to prevent retaliation um, from this shooting. Um, how are you trying to prevent retaliation? So we're working with many community stakeholders and others in the community as well at reference that. We have many detectives that are out canvassing. We'll have additional patrols in the area and additional patrols out as well. We've also partnered with some of our federal and state partners as well from additional resources. If I, I can add. Yeah, go ahead. I think we also are hoping to locate and apprehend a suspect as soon as possible to prevent any uh, retaliation. Is there another question on the side before I move to the center, sir, in the back? Hi, Alex Brashay from ABC News. Uh, I just want to clarify on the, the two firearms that were recovered. I just, we heard this before that one was a, a rifle and, uh, and a pistol. Can you just clarify, are they both handguns? We recovered two handguns at the scene, but there were different, multiple different shell casings that were recovered, so we're not certain how many total weapons were involved. Multiple shell casings that were different from the two handguns that you recovered? Correct. Okay. Okay, is there another question here? Young lady there? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we always did, we're aware of that. We do see a spike of calls in general over the summer. So we work on staffing and additional staffing in those regards as well. We'll also have our community engagement teams out as well, proactively looking for that. There's also the city, when I'll let the mayor speak on, or have other, other initiatives that we're implementing as well to assist with gun violence. Yes. We've been yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, go ahead, we've been working closely with federal alcohol, tobacco, and firearms to increase our partnership and make sure that we're able to track crime guns. So when a gun is used in a crime in a shooting, it's often that it may be used again in quick succession. And so we've been working to improve our process of processing shell casings, even if we don't recover a gun at a scene, to try to link cases and try to apprehend suspects as quickly as possible. We're working heavily to get guns off the street and make sure we have adequate staffing for this summer. And then from there, we also recently have been announcing our Credible Messenger program that we hope to launch at the end of this summer in which folks who have a background in the criminal justice system can reach out to folks who are at risk of being involved in gun violence and help intervening in the lives of people who might otherwise uh, choose to commit an act of violence. Uh, furthermore, we're working very closely with uh, a lot of our nonprofits in the community to work on youth opportunities so that our young people have things to do that are positive, that are energizing, that are empowering, that do not lead them down a path towards committing violence. Yes, ma'am. Um, Linda Sparrow from Green News. So, to follow up with what you said from ABC, to follow up and then I have a question. Um, you know, regarding the shell casings you found on social media, we heard a post, and it seemed like there was a semi-automatic weapon that was used in the actual shooting, not the people firing back. Um, so if you can clarify that, that would be great. And then I, I'll give you for two. Yeah, there were multiple different shell cases at the scene, so there were several firearms that were used. Um, I'm not going to share what all of those differences. We recovered in excess of 35 shell casings um, for multiple different weapons. One of them does appear to be a rifle. Okay, so then the second part is, you're talking about retaliation, and you may not answer this one, so I have a part three. So, 
The retaliation, um, also on social media, people are talking about it's a gang, it's gang affiliation. If you can mention that, and then the part two might go to the assistant fire chief or the backup fire chief, that because you got your own EMS now, what's, was anything, um, was it delayed? Were they on time? Uh, how, did they, how did it work for you this time, having your own EMS? So I can answer the first part. We are always concerned about um, gang violence specifically being involved in that. As I mentioned, we don't have a for sure suspect at this point. So I'd be, I'd be remiss to, to say for sure that is the motive that was involved, but that's why we're asking for the community's help and support to help us with that information. But it was absolutely an area we are exploring. Acting Chief Captain. So uh, I'm not exactly sure about the own EMS. We've been operating uh, City of Akron with an EMS department for many years. But I can assure you that, uh, like I said before, the, the work of our safety communications and getting this dispatched immediately and the correct number for the uh, magnitude of this was, was crucial. Um, we had eight med units respond uh, immediately within the first uh, two to three minutes of this incident. And uh, throughout that chaotic scene, they were able to quickly and efficiently triage and transport as quickly as possible. So there was no delay on the EMS part. If I can follow up, thank you. Um, I think part of that is also the, the change that was made with the outside EMS service. You know, we always respond to emergencies like this. Uh, it would just be a question of, uh, in the past, there was the outside company that would do the transports if it was uh, a lesser emergency. And so this was the same response as it would have been a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and we're really proud of how EMS responded in this situation. Real quick, too, for, to expedite and be efficient with our responses, please keep your question to one initial question. Then we'll come back if time permits for the second question. I'll grab you next, but Michelle, uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, in a lot of minority communities, um, there's a lot of gang affiliation. And what you want to say to people or implore to them as far as their responsibility as a citizen here and to as part of trying to stop the violence, what they need to do. Also, we're being told people are already taking down videos because they don't want to get involved or say anything. The level of violence in our community and frankly in communities across the country is out of control. The availability of weapons, the casualness with which some people use weapons, uh, you know, something that in the past may have been a fist fight now turns into a deadly shooting like this. We have to hold people accountable when they commit violence. That's the only way to keep our community safe. There is a lot of long-term work that we need to do in investing in the root causes of violence, and we are beginning that work. But we have to hold people accountable when they commit violence. There are a number of ways in which we are able to protect the anonymity of people who share information with us. But sharing information with us and helping hold people accountable when they do awful things, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a thing of honor and it's also each of our responsibilities. Is it, yes, sir, it's good. Three, three to go. Uh, this seems like an interesting time that the ring camera program has been rolled out. Uh, between the initial main public cameras that are already in place along with the newly distributed ring cameras. First of all, are they up and running in this ward and is there a plan to utilize that system right now in its inaugural opportunity? Yeah, so there are, there are some. We always continue to go out and try to get any cameras we can. Video evidence, including ring and others, are extremely important for us. We've already started that work. We're getting some and hopefully we'll get even more and continue to process that. Yes, sir. Um, so it's been almost 19 hours since this happened um, what has the department done to try to find the perpetrator? Uh, I know you're asking people to, to reach out to the department, but what, what has the department done proactively to um, find, find the suspect and find the motive? Correct. Yes, yeah, so we had a team of detectives that were out at the scene last night. They've continued to work throughout the day today, following up on information on any leads. We have received a few initial leads, and we're following up on those as well. Also, re that information. We're going to be sending all the, the shell casings out as well. So we have detectives continue to work on it. They will continue to work on this case around the clock. I can add. You sure. Detectives have also been at the hospitals. I'm correct on that. 
Um, I, I do want to underscore that this is a, a pretty chaotic scene, right? There were the number, the sheer number of people who were shot, um, as well as the number of people who are potential witnesses, is a very chaotic scene. And so we are working to get a handle on what information is there. We're presenting what information we can verify to you right now, but we and the whole department is dedicated to holding someone accountable as quickly as possible. Sir sure, Richard Center. Tina Bovenzi with Fox 8 Cleveland. Uh, is the resident or homeowner or renter there that threw that party facing any charges for throwing a party? You, you responded to a nuisance call first, and then it seems it carried back on leading to the shooting. Are they um, being held accountable in any way? So we'll continue to investigate the case, but I think everyone needs to understand you should be able to throw a party in this community and feel safe and be safe in that regard. So this is a tragic incident. We're going to investigate the entire incident, and ultimately we'll run whatever fact pattern we have by the prosecutor's office and look at that case as well. But we think really, like we mentioned before, everyone should have, be, have the ability to get together with their loved ones, friends, and family and be safe, and that's what we're working on. Quick follow-up about the two guns recovered. Did they come back as stolen or unregistered, or do you have any detail about no them? No details about them at this point. Yes. So regarding the first time when your officers were there at 10 o'clock, um, was there a re I mean, obviously it was a party of 200 people. Do you feel like they probably shouldn't have left, that they should have stayed? So the, the crowd did break up. The party did begin to break up at that time. People began to leave, and then I believe they came back after our officers left. I have one more follow-up. There have been uh, trust issues in this community with the police department. So how, how do you go forward with trying to get people to speak with you when they do have those trust issues? Well, I... I have an answer, but you okay, can go sure. first. Yeah, so, so we're aware of that. We're aware of the distrust and the trauma that, uh, with law enforcement specifically in the community. We can totally do that developing one relationship at a time. That's the first part. Partnering, like the, the mayor mentioned, with credible messengers other in the community. And we also, that's why we have multiple ways to remain anonymous. We're asking for the information. How we, rem the ability to remain anonymous, that tip 411 app we talked about, is a way that we can go back and forth and remain anonymous on both sides. That's just to get the information, but absolutely we need to continue to develop those relationships and build bonds with the community. That's who we're here to support, and we're taking that work very seriously. Okay, we have time for just maybe one or two other questions. Captain, uh, I have a, a, oh, one, one more comment there. Uh, the top three things this department is focused on are community policing, gun violence prevention, and retention and recruitment. And our administration has been very focused on accountability and transparency and will continue to be. Um, all of those things have an aspect of trust building that are built into them. We recognize the gaps in trust that are there. We're not trying to shy, shy away from them or hide away from them, but we all as a community need to address the gun violence going on in our community. Okay. Go ahead, sir. What's the message to the, the community there? I have brief interactions. They say that a lot of things happen there don't feel safe essentially what's your message to them we are working to make sure everyone in our community feels safe the number one way that we can hold uh, that we can create safety with regard to this specific incident it is holding someone accountable for it and making sure that this does not give rise to a chain of violence that continues across this summer right when it comes to uh, a broader sense of safety every single person in our community deserves to feel safe it doesn't matter which neighborhood you're in Everyone deserves to feel safe. And so some of the things we're talking about, whether it's really making community policing a centerpiece so people see officers walking the beat and are able to build those relationships, working to make sure we have the staffing that we need across the summer to make sure we can respond to events at the front end and hopefully prevent events like this. There are so many different aspects of it, and we're not going to fix this overnight, but we are committed to it. We're not hiding from it. We're not shying away from it. I was out there this morning at the scene our police department is working to address this as as aggressively as we can okay um, last question sir um, just circling back you mentioned 35 shell casings there are more than 35 shell casings here uh, you also uh, alluded to the fact that you believe that a rifle may have been used um, look a lot of bullets in a short amount of time do you believe that uh, an AR-15 style rifle was used in, in, in some capacity here there was an assault rifle. We did recover those rounds. We don't have the gun, so I don't want to speculate on the exact gun that was used in, in this, but I would not. It's possible. All right. We good? Thank you.
Thank you. Well, that's the end of this uh, press conference. We do want to thank everyone for taking the time to come out. Any additional uh, questions, um, if you have any, you could submit those to press at AkronOhio.gov. Uh, if some ancillary emails would come to me, I would also forward those back to um, the press email. We'll try to get you some ancillary responses in that regard. We will not be holding any separate uh, interview on camera interview uh, accommodations uh, after this press conference, so this would conclude that. We'll provide those updates as they are able to be shared. As we reiterated, this is very preliminary. There are a lot of moving parts. As many of you mentioned, there are a lot of nuances and victims and witnesses and things of that nature for us to comb through. So that will conclude uh, this press conference, and we thank you all for your time.